You are listening to Catholic Family Podcast. The Arrow of the Love of God, 22. All for the Love of Jesus. Love is a necessity to every human heart. Man is swayed by love either for good or for evil. Hence, it is of the highest importance for every man, and especially for the young man, that an active, practical, abiding, unswerving love of God should dwell within his heart, of the highest importance for the young man, since it is in youth that the war against the threefold enemy, the devil, the world, and the concupiscence of the flesh, is the fiercest and most decisive. If you, my dear young man, while you are rejoicing in the golden days of youth, fail to gain a mastery over the devil, the world, and the concupiscence of the flesh, the victory will at a later period become very difficult, perhaps even impossible. And in this case, you will never win the heavenly crown, which is the reward of him who conquers. But how, and by what means, shall you conquer? Solely and wholly through the power of love. For of love, the poet sings, Love is like the orb of day, love in every heart holds sway. Who no more can tune his lay, to love may cast his light away. Love is your master, for he masters you. Shakespeare Love aids the hero, bids ambition rise, to nobler heights inspires immortal deeds. E'en softens brutes and adds a grace to virtue. Thompson. Love's reign is eternal, the heart is his throne, and he has of all seasons of life for his own. Morris. There is a comfort in the strength of love, t'will make a thing endurable, which else would overset the brain or break the heart. Wordsworth. Love is strong as death. Many waters cannot quench charity, neither can the floods drown it. Solomon, Canticle 8, 6, 7. But only true love, love to God, has power to conquer the devil, the world, and the concupiscence of the flesh. Wherefore, let a true, practical, abiding love of God and of Christ be your guiding star. Let it be the mainspring of your life. Let it animate and strengthen you. You must learn to say from your heart with the Apostle St. Paul, The charity of Christ presseth us. 2 Corinthians 5.14 For then only will you be able to speak of victory. Without love, no victory whatever can be achieved, and on no domain. We learn this from sacred and profane history from the history of the world, from the history of each individual man. Love, as generally understood, conquers in good as well as in evil. What, for instance, inspired and animated many a patriot to march fearlessly to battle and to perform those immortal deeds of heroism which are read of in the pages of history? It was love, love for their native land. What induced Napoleon the Great to give himself no rest, but to drive his triumphal chariot through all the countries of Europe? It was love, the love for fame. What induces the miser to resist the most powerful of all instincts, the desire for food and drink, and literally to starve himself to death with a chest full of gold in his possession? It is love, the love of money. What leads an invalid to conquer fear and anguish and to submit to a most painful and dangerous operation? It is love, the love of his own life, which makes him risk everything. What causes a mother so often to give up her own ease and comfort and sacrifice money, time, sleep, health, and everything she can call her own for the sake of a sick child? It is love her great love for her offspring. 
And what enables pious married people to conquer their selfish desires? It is love. The love which ought to exist between husband and wife. What induced St. Vincent de Paul to achieve so heroic a victory over himself, and to allow himself to be shut up in prison with the dregs of mankind, with unhappy convicts condemned to the galleys? It was love. Love for their immortal souls. How would it have been possible that untold numbers of holy martyrs, amongst whom were tender virgins and young children, should renounce not only honor, freedom, and fortune, health, the joys of family life, but should give up their lives amid terrible torture? It was only possible through the power of love, love for their Redeemer. They said with the apostles, the love of Christ presseth us. And how was the greatest and most glorious victory recorded in the annals of the human race obtained? The victory over sin, death, and hell, the divine victory of the Savior when he expired upon Mount Calvary. This was indeed the supremest victory of love, the victory of divine and infinite charity in regard to the poor sons of Adam. Such, my youthful reader, is the all-conquering might of love, and if you know that it is imperatively necessary for you to overcome the lust of the eyes, the concupiscence of the flesh, and the pride of life, in order to win and wear the victor's crown in heaven, how consoling is the thought that you will be able to conquer through the might of love, through the love of Christ. And he, the savior of the world, has made it so easy for us to love him, because he first loved us, and has done so very much for us. Ought it not rather to be difficult not to love this divine Redeemer? Wherefore, let a true and all-absorbing love of God enter into your heart and dwell there. This love streams forth from the tabernacle, from the sacrament of love. At this moment, the Savior is knocking at the door of your heart. Open to him, let him enter in, that he may inflame you with his love. Pray, pray. Heart of Jesus, inflamed with love of me, inflame my heart with love of thee. Thus shall you conquer through the power of love, conquer your impure and evil passions. This unholy fire will be subdued by the holy fire of a true love of God. Darkness shrouds your future. Who can lift the veil which conceals it? Perhaps it is thick with storms and strife, but if love of Christ reigns in your heart, you will pass in safety through life's long day and death's dark night. Wherefore pray frequently and fervently to your Redeemer in some such words as these. O Christ, whose life on earth was love, our hearts with charity inspire. Draw all our thoughts to heaven above, where love fulfills the soul's desire.